Hey guys, welcome to Integration Week 3 review. In this session, we're going to be looking at uh, chain rule and reverse, integrating quotients, integration of rational functions, uh, and also integrating products and quotients by substitution. Now, the four questions that we're going to be looking at uh, in this session is these four here. And what I'm also going to do is, uh, I'm going to do something different this time. I'm actually going to show you guys how to do substitution for each of these uh, questions as well. Yes, there are four different ways of doing this, but substitution can be used for literally anything, and it just makes life so much more easier. Okay, so let's get started with question one. Actually, no, I'm going to give you guys some time to actually do this four questions. So have a go, pause, have a go, and then uh, when you're ready, we'll get going. Okay, so assuming you've actually paused and tried these questions, so here we go, starting from question one. All right, guys, so for question one, we're going to be looking at chain rule in reverse. Um, and I guess, you know, when you do enough of these integration questions or enough differentiation questions, you can kind of start seeing patterns. And in this case, the pattern that I want you guys to see is that the fact that if you actually, well, first off, we, we can't actually integrate this with sine and cos. We've got to do something to it. But what you should be able to notice is that when you actually differentiate cos x, you actually get negative sine x. All right. And what you have here is you've got sine x actually in front of you. Now, the first step I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get rid of the 2. And I'm going to write 2 outside the bracket. So I'm going to write this as 2 sine x cos x to the power of 4 dx. Okay, now the reverse chain rule, what you can do is this is basically what you can do. So you can have 2 multiplied by sine x, and I have cos x to the power of, well, obviously I've got to add 1 to the power, so I'm going to go 4 plus 1, uh, and divided by the new power, which is 4 plus 1, so it's 5, and also multiplied by the differentiation or actually, should I say, multiplied by 1 over the differentiation of cos x. So the differentiation of that is going to be negative sine x. So simplifying this, what happens is sine x and sine x cancels out. The negative 1 comes to the numerator, and what we're left over with is negative 2 over 5 cos x to the power of 5 plus c. Now that should be our final answer. Now you can... You know if you're right with when you actually differentiate this particular function, when you differentiate it, and see whether you get this answer here. So, as I told you guys, I am going to show you guys how to do it side by side with substitution. So, with substitution, um, I've got 2 sine x cos 4x dx. So with substitution, what you need to do is I'm going to first up, I'm going to write down that u equals to cos x. All right. So the next step is finding out du dx. Du dx could be written as negative sine x. Because when you differentiate cos x, you get negative sine x. Uh, and the key thing is when we're doing substitution is to get rid of everything that has an x in in your equation so we've got sine x we've got cos to the power of 4x and we've also got the dx all right so what we could do is we could actually write dx by itself because if you look at this differentiated function what i could do is i can rewrite this as du divided by negative sine x is equal to dx okay now, you might wonder, why did I just do that? Well, let's have a look at the way how we start substituting things, all right? So the reason I, I put dx there is because at the moment, what I have is I've got 2 sine x, uh, cos x 4x, sorry, cos, to the power, cos x to the power of 4. I've already done it. I've done it here. I said u equals to cos x, which means cos x to the power of 4 is going to be u to the power of 4. Now, I've also done dx, I'm replacing dx with du divided by negative sine x, or with respect to negative sine x, that's the right wording I should really be using. So at this point, what you can see is sine x and sine x actually cancel out each other. And what you're left over with is simply negative 2, because there's a negative 1 here, you see it, right? u to the power of 4 du. 
And look at that, that's a nice little easy simple um, integration problem for you guys. So you integrate this as negative 2 u to the power of 5 divided by 5 plus c. And don't forget, you've got to resubstitute u back in in terms of cos. So you're going to get negative 2 uh, cos x to the power of 5 and the whole thing divided by 5 plus c. And what you should see is that both these answers are the same answers. OK, so let's go to the next question. So this question we're looking at is integrating quotients. When I say integrating quotients is that see if there is a link between uh, these two. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you look at it, it's, you know, 2x to the power of 4. When you differentiate 2x to the power of 4, you get 8x cubed. When you differentiate sine x, you get cos x. So straight away, you can see that this is actually quotients. You're dealing with quotients. So in terms of that, you can literally just write this as this is equal to ln of 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x plus c. Now, the other thing that you could have done is, I mean, you could do it the old-fashioned way, which is basically like going from here to here, writing it as 8x cubed plus cos x. And I guess it kind of helps doing the second method, because what that means is you actually can calculate, um, especially when you have like, when it's not so easy, it's better to actually write it like this, multiply it by ln of 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x. And of course, remember when you do that, you anytime you do integration of ln, you've got to divide by differentiation of whatever is inside the ln, of func ln function. So in this case, you're going to get 8x cubed plus cos x. And as you guys can see, these two things are going to cancel out each other. And we just left over with ln of 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x plus c. Okay. Let's try the substitution method. Okay, so we've got 8x cubed plus cos x divided by 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x. So what I'm going to do is this thing here. And I'm going to show you guys another little trick that you can also do. So here I'm going to put u equals 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x which means du dx is now equal to 8x cubed plus cos x. And instead of rearranging and putting dx by itself, what you could also do is you could actually do this. You could actually write du equals 8x cubed plus cos x dx. And what I've just done is, if you guys notice, this entire thing equals to du, which means this entire thing right here is equal to du. So I can actually rearrange, rewrite this equation as simply du divided by, and remember that u equals 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x. I can just write that as u. And this is no different. I mean, this is your basic 1 over u du question. I mean, you just got to integrate this. You get ln of u plus c, but we already know what ln uh, of u, I mean, we know what u is, so we just substitute in 2x to the power of 4 plus sine x plus c. And guess what? Once again, same two answers. Okay, so let's go to question number three, which is integration of rational functions. So, now, I know you guys were wondering, you know, why the hell did we be doing long division back in uh, algebra? And I guess this is one place where um, it does come handy. There are other ways of doing this as well. I've seen one other way of doing it, which is to do with the coefficient substitution, which I always get confused about. So, sorry guys, you can have a look online to see another ways of doing this, but this is the method I tend to use. So, with this, please don't do this. I mean, I always see some, some genius would come along and do something like this. Where they look at this two functions and go, oh, x and x cancels out. And what you have is 6 minus 1 divided by 3. Yeah. Uh, if you're doing that, uh, you really need some help with algebra there. But anyway, going with this question. So we've got to do long division first. So I've got x plus 3. And I've got 6x minus 1. 
So I know that 6 is what I want to be multiplying it with, so I'm going to get 6x plus 18. And when I subtract it, I have negative 1 minus 18, which equals to negative 19. So in other words, I could actually write integral of 6x minus 1 over x plus 3 dx. I can rewrite it now as integral of 6 minus 19 divided by x plus 3 dx. So integrating this, I'm going to get 6x minus 19 ln of x plus 3. Um, and of course, that's actually divided by the differentiation of x plus 3, which is 1 in this case. And of course, don't forget your plus c. So what you have is 6x minus 19 ln of x plus 3 plus c. Okay. Now, I'm going to try and do this in substitution method. Um, let's see if it works. I'm actually going to try it on a piece of paper first and then come back to you guys. Give me a second. Ah, who am I kidding? Let's just give it a go. And if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my integral as it is. 6x minus 1 over x plus 3 dx. Okay. So first step, I'm going to put u equals to x plus 3. Okay. Now, if u equals to x plus 3, then I can say that du over dx, now let's make it a different color, hold on. So du dx can be written as just 1. So in this case, we can actually say that du equals to dx. Okay, so when I start replacing things here, I've got 6x minus 1 in the numerator. I've got u in the denominator because x plus 3 is u. I'm going to put that in a different color too. And I've got dx is equal to du. But the problem now is I still got an x there that I need to get rid of. Can you see that? So with the 6x minus 1, I need to write that in terms of u. Now, what I do know is that u can be written as x plus 3, which means x now can be written as u minus 3. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of that x in that uh, integral sign. And I'm going to replace it with u minus 3. So then I've got minus 1 divided by u du. And so what I now have is if I expand the numerator there, I get 6u minus 18 minus 1 divided by u du. Simplifying it, I get 6u minus 19 divided by u du. Separating the u's, I've got 6u divided by u minus 19 divided by u du and I can write this now as 6 minus 19 over u du now I want you guys to watch something really carefully can you actually see any sign of like any pattern between this and this because remember u is equal to um, x plus 3 it's the same thing but what I'm going to do though I'm going to integrate it with respect to u so then I'm going to get 6 6u minus 19 over 19 ln of u and plus c. Okay, so now substituting the u, what I'm going to end up with is 6x plus 3 minus 19 ln of x plus 3 plus c. Now, you might notice there's a slight problem here. The problem is that you've actually got x plus 3 here. I mean, when we expand this, we're going to get 6x plus 18 minus 19 ln of x plus 3 plus c. But I don't want you guys to panic because what I need you to understand is that even though I've used this c here, you need to understand that this c and this c is not the same. Um, because uh, to kind of think about it is because you know how we got 18 as a constant here so it kind of just this this value of the C here in in the bottom here is completely different to the value of C here both of these are correct all right there's nothing wrong with both of them both of them are correct um, just pick whichever one's the easier method to go with and stick by okay last question of the day folks Ah, this beautiful question. Now, 
unfortunately uh, the best way to do this is by substitution but you will get some students who end up doing this where they have x square root of x plus 4 what they do is they write it like this x ah oh, this is x plus 4 to the power of half and then suddenly they'll write it like this x multiplied by x to the power of half plus x multiplied by 4 to the power of half and by some magic they come up with this formula that it's x3 over 2 plus 2x now if for any reason you did this you are completely wrong okay I'm sorry go back and check some of your indices rules just to see that you're actually doing the right thing uh, especially dealing with square root symbols so how do we go about this well and I guess this is why I did the previous question with the u substitution so if you have u is equal to x plus 4 then we can write du dx equals to 1 therefore du equals to dx but when I write this in my integral format I've got x square root of u du but what we do know is that we can actually rearrange x now x can be written as x minus 4 so because of that I'm gonna sorry not x equals x minus 4 you get what I'm trying to say it's u minus 4 yeah it's getting pretty late in the night all right u minus 4 so then what we have is square root of well x is now u minus 4 so I'm gonna put down u minus 4 here multiplied by square root of u du now folks now you can actually do the expanding of brackets because this can be written as u minus 4 multiplied by u to the power of half du so when we expand this bracket we're going to get u to the power of 1.5 or 3 over 2 minus 4 u to the power of half du now you actually integrate it so you've got u 3 over 2 plus 1 divided by 3 over 2 plus 1 minus 4u half plus 1 divided by half plus 1 and of course don't forget u plus c so simplifying this remember that you actually have to re-substitute u back I mean I'm saying I'm talking you've got to write it in terms of x not use so we're gonna write this as x plus 4 because that's what u is equal to now 1.5 plus 1 is 2.5 so I'm gonna write that as 5 over 2 so that's divided by 5 over 2 minus 4 x plus 4 to the power of um, what do we got half plus 1 1.5 so 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus c all right guys um, I know it's, this was a very long video but um it's just I really wanted to hit home the the idea of substitution and how you can actually use it for any sort of integration um, but yeah, if you have any questions, uh, drop it in the comments below. But apart from that, uh, thank you for watching.